Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the first car of the series. This is a 2003 Porsche Cayenne Turbo 955. Um, 955 being, it is the first iteration of the Porsche Cayenne. And I know what you're wondering, why have I bought a massive SUV? Um, good question, I really don't know. It just happens to be the first kind of lists from the racing games I used to play. And I've always had a soft spot for them. Um, I don't have the need for a big practical SUV, but I do love practicality, even though I don't need it. And it, it's a Porsche Cayenne Turbo. You don't see many of these around on the road anymore. It's, it's quite an iconic looking thing. Um, see some things you may be wondering, um, how many miles has it done? It's done 79,000 miles. So it hasn't done moon mileage yet. Um, has it got a full service to it? Yes, it has got a fish. Um, how much did I pay for it? Well, this is where it gets interesting because I actually have the original receipt for the Porsche Cayenne that I have here. Um, and it tells you the list price and all the options. So I forgot to bring it. So I'll do a little overlay. Um, so this car costs somewhere over 70,000 pounds new. But in today, because depreciation exists, I bought this for just shy of 7,000 pounds. 7,000 pounds for this. It's, I can't get my head around it. it what a brilliant um, bit, of, bit of kit for that amount of money. And it gets better because this is pre 2006. So the road tax isn't abysmal like it is on my C63 where it's like 600 pounds. So it's a, it's a rather cheap and cheerful 360 pounds. It's, it, I could daily this. Now you're probably wondering why I reversed the Porsche Cayenne into the intro as opposed to driving it forwards. Um, well, the looks are quite controversial, so I thought I'd just reverse it in. And I actually do prefer the facelift of the Porsche Cayenne, of this, well, of any Porsche Cayenne, it's my favorite, it's the 957. This is obviously the pre-facelift, and I do, I do prefer the 957, but I don't know, there's something about this one, this model, the 955, it, it just looks iconic, and it's, a, it's such a statement car, isn't it? I, I really love the look of these. So even though the 957 to me looks better, I actually prefer the 955 just because it's such a timeless design, isn't it? Before we move on, I just want to say a massive thank you to the previous owner. It is, he loved this car dearly, I could see, and he was very reluctant to let it go. Um, I hope this car, I do you proud, and this car does very well of the channel. Um, and hopefully everyone likes this car as well, and everyone buys one and gets them back in the road. So let's not waste any more time and let's show you around the car. Okay, well, let's just start our walk around. Um, immediately you are faced with these 911-esque styled lights, which were quite a controversial design on the Porsche Cayenne. Some people didn't like it. I certainly do. It kind of looks like a misshapen egg. Uh, around the front, these grills are very big. And I didn't know that, notice this before, but on the regular kind, it's a smaller grill and uh, these parts is separated with this plastic trim. But yeah, the, you can tell it's a, a turbo model when these grills are quite big and aggressive. This kind's finished in this very lovely black. It's got some like gold flakes in it. I can't really describe it, but it looks really good in the sun, which we don't have now. Um, but it looks brilliant. Um, and I don't remember the original name of the colour, but I, it is in the original receipt, which I can show you on the overlay, I guess. On the side, we've got this uh, light cluster here, which is actually the indicator, and you can actually see it in the wheel arch as well. And if we come down here, well, you can't really miss it. We've got 22 inch wheels, which are ginormous, and the profile is quite small. 35 it's yeah and all the wheels are feeling a bit sorry for themselves and they're in a bit of a sorry state yeah i'd much rather have 20 inch alloys and a much thicker sidewall because that make that would make the um, ride sublime um and i also would rather these center caps be um an actual porsche emblem i don't know why they're just blanked out but yeah yeah not too bad so far so good come down to the side you've got these huge wing mirrors 
if you come even further down, you can see this is a really cool touch. You can see the, the door handle is actually color embedded to the actual paintwork. I think that's what it is. Otherwise, why else would it be black there? So I think that's what it is, it's color coordinated, which I think is a pretty neat touch. Next thing I'm not really too keen on though are these uh, wind deflectors. I'm not really a huge fan of um, wind deflectors at all. Um, especially in a car like this, I think it looks much classier without them. So I think they might have to go. On the flip side though, we got loads of chrome, which was actually really hard to find because a lot of people who've owned these Cayennes just kept blacking all the chrome out. And I just think it looks so much nicer and it contrasts so much nicer when you get all the chrome. Um, yeah, the vast majority of cars I was looking online, they're all blacked out. And it just reminds me of the cars that the hitmen were using to chase Jason Bourne. It, yeah, it just reminds me too much of those. I much prefer the classy look with all the chrome. I hope you all agree. Or oh, I'm just forgetting old. Coming to the rear of the car, this is actually my favorite part of the car. I think it looks menacing and it looks fantastic. I love the, the, the fonts of the writing for the Cayenne Turbo. I think it looks brilliant. Um, it gets better because we also have this. This is a, a separate tailgate, I suppose. You get it like on a three series touring. And it's, it's the best feature on a car I think that's ever been made. You just literally open it up, put your shopping bags in, close it. I'm really chuffed about that. And it gets better again. I mean, I used to think that these Porsche Cayennes are quite boxy. And, but when I actually seen this in person, I didn't realize like it's actually got some really neat um, curves. Like, look at this, for example. Look at this curve here. That is pure Jaguar XK. You guys have probably already seen it, but I completely understand that this absolutely needs to go um, and get replaced immediately because I think that would make the car look so much more modern. And another thing which needs doing are these quad tail pipes, which I told you about earlier, which I really like, but they're in such a sorry state right now. Um, uh, yeah, so they need to be clean. And I think it would look absolutely fantastic. Okay, I've shown you the exterior of the car. So let's go into the interior. Um, this being a turbo model means a lot of things are standard with this car. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at, whoa, look at this great interior. And you're probably wondering, is this the spec you wanted? Um, the answer is no, I actually didn't want the gray interior. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Um, I really wanted a Sahara beige sandy colour. Um, I'm not sure if I can attach a picture for you. Um, that was the perfect spec, but a perfect spec means you could be waiting months for the perfect spec, um, which I don't have because I'm going to be keeping this car short term and I want to get this series underway. And then my partner also spoke some sense into me and she said, if you get the perfect spec, you are more likely to form an attachment to it and keep it. So. I think she was right and getting the grey interior probably ultimately was the correct decision. I will show you the grey interior on the receipt that I have. Um, but yeah, let's have a look around. So uh, we've got fully adjustable electric seats. We've got furry carpet there. Uh, we've got Porsche mat there. You've got a Bose sound system, which I haven't heard yet. Yep, more fur there. Let's uh, jump in. I've got loads of things to show you. So moving in front of you immediately, you are greeted with this fantastic cluster, which I love ever so much. You've got this little temperature gauge, rev counter, uh, central dials, which has fuel and temperature and 79,000 miles. And I love this Porsche logo. Mind you, you are driving a Porsche. Uh, speedometer there and you have a turbo bar to show how much turbo you've got uh in front of you lovely steering wheel um buttons everywhere i think this has got a hit your steering wheel that's what the guy told me but i'm not sure how you find it um but yeah um what does it smell like you may be asking if you have smell vision um it smells like um a 20 year old car um but yeah, I love this. I love all these buttons. There's so many buttons and I, it's so 2003. I really, really do love how many buttons there are, even if I don't understand what most of them do. But yeah, you got heated seats there. You got um, air con, 
Um, you got this, which is a really cool feature. If you don't want to see these buttons, flick that up. It says Porsche. Um, what else can I show you? We've also got a full leather dash, which it feels great. And you've also got Alcantara headlining and it feels soft as like rabbit fur. It's great, it feels amazing. And there's something else I wanna talk about as well. Build quality in here is absolutely exceptional. This, this for example, you, it, literally there's no give. I, I'm giving it some welly right now and I'm telling you, it, it, there is no give, it is solid. That is solid Stuttgart sturdiness. You could probably tow a Land Rover with that. Um, what else have we got here? We also have um, some buttons down here. I think that's the diff locks. You got these mountains, which means I could probably drive over those. You've also got sport, normal, and comfort for your driving settings. And you've also got this. This is the settings for the air suspension. That is a very cool mechanism, um, but I like to keep it in the lowest setting because, it, well, I think it looks too high for me. Uh, yeah, you got lovely Cayenne embroidered into there. Six speed Tiptronic gearbox, which are operated by these buttons here on either side. And you've also got a glove box, which takes a long time to open. And uh, what's that? What's that? There's that aircon in there as well. No, it's brilliant. Of course, there is more to show you, but I don't want to spoil it all for you and do it all at once. So, you also got here, you got your sunglasses. You've also got a sunroof, which you can adjust here and pull the blinds back or open it however you want. But yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I love the interior in this, even in this gray interior. So yeah, let's move into the back. I know this is a very shaky run and gun sort of video, but it's the best way to show you, I think. Um, so over here, you've got your area access. Look down here, you've got these ashtrays, which I guess the hitmen could burn some bodies in there. Um, so get into the back. You've also got a Porsche health pack, which looks really nice, because it says Porsche on it. But yeah, getting into the back, a very nice serene experience and we also have heated rear seats which is very nice indeed and you also have a nice storage area there for your AA road maps if anyone still uses those um, you got some a lighter thing down there and I like this you got a vent here you know you're in an SUV when you've got a nice event there and we've got one over here we've got a hook area I guess and if we come around here I think we've got a armrest. What's this do? I don't actually know what this does. Oh, it's an open, it opens up. Ah, very nice little storage area. Now I guess that just goes back there. Let's get to the boot. Boots are very fun because you can put lots of things in them, even though, even though I don't have much to show you. But open this up. Yeah, look at that. 540 liters, I think, is the capacity. So a sizable amount, 12 volt socket there, 12 volt socket there, uh, load cover, I've always wanted one of these, I don't know why, but I find that very entertaining, and it, it gets better because if we get even further into the car, you got this, a bunny stopper, you can, you can get bunnies in here which can't go anywhere because you got this, uh, what a fantastic experience, and just one more final thing to show you, under here we have, I think that's for the air suspension, and we also got the massive Bose subwoofer. And also up here we also have a Porsche written there and lots of soft fairy materials here and there and everywhere. Now it's time to look at the engine. So this is a 4.5 litre twin turbo V8. Puts out about 450 horsepower um, and about 460 foot-pound of torque. And I just want to say how beautiful this engine is. It's like, look at it, and look how it's got the turbo written there and the Porsche written there. I think it's an elegant looking engine. And look how neat and tidy everything is. You've got all your fluids on the side if you ever want to fill up. It's, it's, and you've got your battery there. It's just a very elegant, well thought out, clean looking engine bay. And obviously this is quite a heavy car, so, it weighs around 2.4 tonnes, so 
even with this much power, it still gets to 0-60 in about 5.6 seconds. It's, it's rather brisk, but we'll leave that for another video. So there you have it guys. This is the Porsche Cayenne Turbo. If I made any mistakes and if there's any Porsche viewers out there and I said something wrong, then I do apologize. This is my first Porsche after all. Um, if there's anything you guys want to see in a Porsche Cayenne Turbo, then please do let me know in the comments down below and I'll see if I can get that filmed for you. And what do you guys think of it? Is it a brilliant purchase or is it a financial mistake? Um, I don't know. I, I've really enjoyed my ownership so far and I can't wait for the up and coming months to spend with this. So uh, I, was, I guess I'll leave that there. I'll do the first drive probably next video. Um, but other than that, thank you very much for watching and uh, bye for now.